very much for your coming. Uh, just now we'd like to start uh, from today's uh, second uh, piece of debates uh, for Tokyo University of Alabama and Technology. Uh, the candidate is Hosai uh, Mandan Mutua. So uh, I would like to ask him for about four minutes uh, presentation, then uh, question and answers from you. Then after that, the ability to present us with. Area. 
we used two major uh, screening methods. One was sandwich method, which is basically we used 10 or 15 milligram dry material, and then we sandwich it between two layers of agar, so, uh, 0.75 uh, percent agar. And then uh, on the top, we, layer, uh, we put seven seed and uh, left a seed. The uh, seed which I'm talking is our test plant here. So uh, throughout this presentation, you might hear it uh, quite often. So the second method, which is basically for the volatile allergic chemical, uh, is, uh, is where we put 10, uh, 200 milligram of the raw material in one of the well of a six well multi dish. And then uh, we put the seeds on other five uh, wells. And then after five days, we measure the radical uh, length of the lettuce. And then we analyze the allergic chemical with different analytical uh, methods. So, in the case of uh, Cocotian plant species, by sandwich and dishback method, uh, Artemisia austriaca showed the strongest inhibitory activity by 100%, followed by their oxalis uh, acetylus on formulary metallus. The result of 10 mg uh, radical elongation was, uh, uh, honored, uh, was not, uh, did not honored with a, to a normal distribution and showed a uh, good normal distribution. As you can see, uh, all, you know, plant, poisonous plant and medicinal plant both show the strong inhibitory activity. More than 3% of the other plants showed more than 50% inhibition of radicals. The contribution of medicinal plant and poisonous plant was quite high in this uh, study. And as you can see here, poisonous plant showed a strong inhibitory activity both in 10 mg and 50 mg compared to the other plant species. We analyzed in total from this region 178 plant species. Also, what was interesting was that the Pogosel family had a, a great uh, contribution to the uh, allelopathic activity of the region. Pogosel family has been reported for its strong uh, inhibitory activity. However, for the first time, we realized that the Lidiasa family has a, very, uh, has a great uh, contribution to the allelopathic activity of plant species in the National Minor Center, especially in the public. But what was very interesting was the changes, was the effect of allelopathy and uh, RTP. So we, I divided the, uh, the region uh, to three distinct uh, areas on subalpine area, alpine area, and the border in between them. And then I analyzed the uh, allelopathic activity of plant species. The allelopathy at the uh, subalpine area was uh, stronger. This is actually if you look at the location. And then when uh, in the border of two, two niches, uh, it was low. And when it reaches to the higher, higher altitude, the 2,800 allelopathy increased. But we can see the Although the effect was not significant, it's because of the uh, in ecological phenomena is normally like this where when you're analyzing data. So it could be due to the elevation of diversity gradient, where uh, increasing in elevation increases the biodiversity. Therefore, this could be, uh, we, we noticed something of the same pattern, however, the pattern we saw it was actually decreasing in allelopathy. It could be due to the fire competition here because of the pine tree forest, uh, which limits the nutrients. Also, if you look at the uh, in the south alpine in the alpine area, due to its uh, a small area, a small com uh, communities, the competition uh, the competition is more it should uh, could be underground, not above. It. So these are the the uh, landscape of two alpine area and sub-alpine area. You can see the forest, and most is uh, obvious forest. So in the case of Iranian medicinal plant, or Iranian plant, the strongest plant was uh, uh, Corpus sativus, or saffron, the stigma, and followed by Paganum parmala, with more, uh, with more than 60% inhibitory activity. For volatile electron call, again, saffron, Show the strong inhibitor activity followed by the zero cephalopogy. Therefore, we have we selected seven species here, eight species in fact. But uh, uh, corpus sativus showed a strong inhibitor activity in overall of 256 screen plants. 
So, Pagano Parmona has been known for its strong inhibitory activity and its uh, other compounds have been known, Parmine and Parmine. Artemisia Australica is famous for allelopathy and its rank of up in our uh, screening. So, so, but the allelopathy, uh, allelopathy components uh, already now, one eighth you know, if you know, you can know. Oxalis acetylosa uh, as well, uh, the allelopathy component of Oxalis acetylosa is oxalica. For the Dragosopano, Kuchi, Abyssal, Mandiana, and Pescuta are also allelopathy components are already been reported, except for the saffron that has not been yet reported. So, it, for the conclusion here, we are screening a large number of Asian virus center plant uh, species and we selected the genes, several candidates. Saffron, Pagano Parmana, and Artemisia for leaf glitches are allelopathy, and the uh, Rabasopana, which is Saffron, uh, Abyssal Mandiana, and Pestuca uh, Varia for volatile allelopathy. So, Therefore, we proceeded in the next uh, step to identify the allelopathy chemical from the most promising. To call one chemical allelopathy chemical, two, two different, uh, uh, we, we need to know two different, two specific concepts. One is the specific activity and then the total activity. A specific activity is the effective concentration of one chemical which uh, exerts half maximum inhibitory. But the total activity is, is the concentration of chemical in, in the plant divided by its specificity. The higher the total activity, the stronger the allelopathy is. But measuring the specificity and total activity of one type of compound is challenging. We also focus on the one type allelopathy here. So the result of our top plant, which was a corpus study, was showed that d isoprone, and saffron are, are the main under, uh, chemical component of this. Uh, Plan. So we developed in, in, in our lab, we developed a new method that you can estimate the ECPP of the gas. So it's called cotton small method. It, it basically has two steps. One step is that we use authentic compound to draw the calibration curve. The second one is that we measure the inhibitory activity of pure compound and also the, uh, the plant itself to, to understand if the total activity here. Then we incubate them. Uh, the seed here again is the lettuce. So by knowing the calibration part and gas concentration by GCMS, we can estimate the EC50. Therefore, the uh, EC50 of saffron was estimated 1.2 nanogram per, uh, per cubic uh, centimeter. As you can see, this is the stigma, and then the contribution is 1.2 nanogram per cubic centimeter. So. We also, we, we need to measure the other specificity of other gas constants. So if you, you can see here, the total activity of saffronol was much higher than other uh, chemical components of saffronol. Therefore, for the first time, we report the saffronol as the main other chemical of saffron. As I said, saffronol was identified as the main volatile other chemical of saffron for the first time. Although the, uh, the, the uh, comprehensive uh, com uh, description about other other chemicals can be seen in the in the body of the thesis. In chapter one, four, we were also curious about the other uh, other part of other part of the saffron because farmer normally farmers normally claim that saffron production declines over the years after seven or eight years, which it could be due to, uh, due to auto intoxication. Uh, uh, which is a type of allelopathy, interspecific allelopathy, in which one plant inhibits and affects its, uh, the growth and survival of its own kind, and through the auto intoxicants or uh, allelopathy impulse. This effect of saffron remains after several years. So we, t we tested this effect using different uh, biassay methods. One is plant cost method, which is basically for measuring the gradient of allelopathy around the donor plant, which is here is saffron. So we used three different uh, treatments. One was the one was the corn with the mechanical uh, bonding. The other one was only corn, and the third one was only the root to to separate the the effects and uh, understand it better. 
the other experiment was we collected the soil from the actual saffron farm in Iran. So we collected the soil from control, which was basically no history of saffron cultivation, two years, six years of cultivation, and farm that corn had been removed after six years of cultivation, okay? The test was kind of similar to the sandwich method, which we call it rhizosphere soil method. They were not possible to say. So, uh, then we measure the uh, growth of the lettuce here, yeah, again, as a test plan. The third experiment was to understand whether these compounds are coming directly from the root or bulb. So we use activated charcoal uh, in another in, uh, a biocid, which is kind of improved plant by its method. But here we can use the activated charcoal to see the effect on the lettuce seeds. So if, uh, as you can see here, the result was significant. And using activated charcoal actually increased the growth of lettuce, meaning the, the side that had no uh, uh, charcoal showed allelopathic activity. The follow for you could help to reduce the authentication of saffron. Iran is the major producer of saffron. So the, uh, the result of this work can contribute to the production of saffron in, uh, uh, saffron farmers in Iran. And uh, thank you very much. This is all from and then I would like to thank you the, the people and the professors that helped me to, to pursue this dream and uh, finish my PhD, hopefully. <laughs> and uh, especially Professor Welkawa and Professor Sassam because of their help. And also uh, people in Russia that helped me a lot in the uh, collection of uh, samples. And Professor Adams in Iran and other classmates, Professor Kazaki, because of his great support, and also Mumchus. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Yeah, so, uh, okay, uh, comments and questions, please, uh, from the audience. Any kind of question, any kind of comments, please. Please give uh, good comments. Uh, critical, critical comments Target of Saponna. Yes. Do 
you have any idea how the customer can inhibit the activity and also the localization of satellite? Is it in the cell wall? No? That's a very good question. It's not easy to say, but with, there's, uh, I have read a couple of papers that Saffron normally co uh, connects to the uh, to the hem part of the enzymes, and also they have the same effect on the uh, tubular formation during the cell wall during the cell division, and it can in, uh, it's actually used for anti-cancer drugs sometimes. So. That's one of the reasons that I think because catalyst also has the hemp group in a high quantity, so it can also affect that way. The other idea is that there are many molecular targets on the cell wall that this saffron will connect and also then later prevents the uh, plant cell from growth. So basically, maybe the molecular target of the saffron is on the cell wall, not the cell membrane. Yeah, there was few evidence about that, but I think that would be one of the answers. Okay, thank you so much. Is there any other comments or questions? Hi. Thank you for your nice presentation. Just a small comment. I'm just interested in the fact that um, the activity in Chapo actually gives the communication effect of the immediate thing of the immediate thing. So we talk about maybe activity chapel being used on the field in yeah. Iran. So yeah. the reality, how possible is it I mean, for farmers to get the activity chapel if in case it can in case it can be a new strategy for reducing the auto contribution? Well I guess the chapel as you know has been used for agriculture several I mean, many years. And in case of Iran, it's easy for what maybe by introducing the activated chapel to the farmers because what is good, yeah, I know the pro and cons about the activated chapel, right? Especially how to provide it, how, how long it will be effective, right? Especially in agriculture. But typically, in mind, the production of the saffron is actually the most expensive spices in the world. So, Providing the activated charcoal to be far and increasing the yield for more than 20 year, years is actually worth paying that money to provide activated charcoal. So I think that is that your question? Yeah. Okay, is there any other comments or questions? Any kind of comments or uh, okay. Can, I, can I just follow up on this question a bit? Yes. Right. Um, so, in your presentation, you mentioned the um, um, effect on the cellular level, but it doesn't matter um, the species. However, as far as I understand, um, when, you work, when it comes to catalyst and inhibiting catalyst, it's a very long term key system. So, it has to be like specific, certain specific compounds for a specific cell. So, I'm not sure if uh, with uh, Saffronol, is it the same where it only works for maybe specific cells, specific plants, or, or can you sort of estimate that it works in a wide range of plants? Yes, we can, because uh, if it's your question, with the protoplast model, we can use different plants. Mm -hmm. We can even put two different species together, I mean the protoplast. And, make, and estimate their allergic activity, whether this cell can kill the other one, even though it feels like the same as what we do in uh, bacterial function, right? So, yes, but for saffronol, this experiment was basically to see the other effect of saffronol in cellular level, not the, the catalyst activity. Catalyst activity was what I just showed you with the uh, localization and also I can think catalyst activity. So basically, to, to link this one of the... So that's, that's on a very specific cellular level. So you can also extrapolate it to effect in, yes. let's say, the real world, as in the plant yes. cell. For, for instance, you can use different salt salinity in the medium. You can use different analytic compounds in that medium, or whole different plant formats, or whatever you can want. So 
combining these things together, you can get the, an estimation of the amount of time. And so, sorry, one more, another extension no from this question. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you mentioned that Sephon uh, is one of the most expensive fighters, which is very true. So and if you are planning, it. yes. But so if you're planning to sort of, um, how to say, uh, utilize it, utilize it, or if you're planning to sort of like ask people to do more research in this particular plan and keep uh, its potential as a annual study, yes. Um, how how would it be cost effective? Well, in general. back to my first, when you first, uh, your first question, it's mostly when we are using something for instant cropping, it doesn't matter because we are taking benefit from the top of the mm -hmm. And we also calculate it with other species. The second one is that synthesizing maybe, in many cases actually, they, they find a lithium part and they develop a herbicide by synthesizing the compost. This is the truth in the world. Like they don't extract it directly from the plant. So if they found as a, a structure of saffron is actually to do this design. So yes, if it's expensive, it's difficult. But saffron is it's not only exist in the saffron, it exists in other species as well. It's one of the sweet as well of many flowers in this case. So the main point is finding it and then and the result. And the situation and yes. the utilization. Okay. Is there any other things? Okay. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah. Thank so, you. it's actually that's the end of this thing. Yes. Yeah. So, I'm going to say to you guys for the time of your time. Thank you so much for your time. We have a party. Uh, for the